We're all familiar with the long list of rap artists who have fallen prey to profit-hungry record execs. Today's guest has refused to be just another casualty and has become renowned for his unrelenting attacks on perpetrators of foul industry politics. Since his debut album came out in 1989, he signed to several different labels and did an entire LP which never even saw the light of day. But he still managed to stay fresh in our minds by recording with the likes of Cool G Rap, KRS One, Naughty by Nature, Funkmaster Flex, OC, Gangstar, and my boys MOP. He's gone to battle for complete control over his own product and joins us today the victorious co-owner of KJAC Music and Entertainment, the label which produced his latest LP, Industry Shakedown. Yeah, that's right, baby. Freddie Fox is up in this piece. Please welcome Plumpy Knuckles. This is One Nation and I'm your host, Tracy McGregor. You've been in the record industry for over a decade. Mm -hmm. What was your first entree into the business? I think I made my first record right after I got out of high school. Mm -hmm. And I was, on a, I was on a record already, you know what I mean? Because all through junior high and high school, I was selling out roller skating rinks and mm -hmm. doing local shows and people were buying tickets. Bop, 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 you know what I mean? How did you link up uh, with that Eric B and Rakim paid in full tour? Okay, Eric, I mean, Rakim was, um, like, he, he, was, he lived in the same neighborhood. Oh, you're from Long Island. Yeah, and what happened was Eric had, um, Eric was looking for an MC, mm -hmm. right? And he came out, and a guy introduced him to me, and he said, yo, this guy right here is like, he said, show me the nicest guys in town. So he, he went to me first, and he said, you know, I seen him, I was driving, the guy pulled me, stopped me, flagged me down, I said, yo, man, this is Eric B. He had this mink coat on, and he was, you know, I was like, yo, what's up, like, you know what I mean? But I was like a sponge with Eric. See, Eric taught me a lot about a lot of things. I used to go sit in his lawyer's meetings with him. I used to sit in his, you know, publishing meetings and mm -hmm. record company meetings. And a, all that stuff I was just absorbing mm -hmm. the whole time. We'd be driving and he'd say, yo, Fox, man, remember this, man. You know, when you're in this business, you're going to meet a lot of people that don't, that don't seem to have your best interest at heart. you got to know how to ride the horse, mm -hmm. though. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's like I listened to all that stuff, and a lot of the stuff he said actually came to pass mm -hmm. later, before later, you know, before right. sooner, and right. that was one of my biggest influences as far as business is concerned, because I watched Eric B. do it, and Eric B. would tell me, yo, man, that's going to be the most important thing you learn is business. You already know how to rap. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know how to make music, mm -hmm. but it don't mean nothing if you can't get it out properly to the people that need to hear it, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I want to ask you about your alter ego. <laughs> Who is Bumpy Knuckles and when does he rear his head? Bumpy is that guy who just sometimes ain't, ain't in the mood for it. He's not having it. Freddie Fox has become like a businessman, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. the reason I separate the two is because people don't do that, mm -hmm. you know, and if people would normally do it, then I would not do it. Bumpy's more like, you know, that's the, that's the struggle, you know what I'm saying? My hands are my tools, you know, and that's the struggle. Those are the weapons that I fight with, you know. Mm -hmm. any t a man with no hands has a, has a hard fight. Mm -hmm. So my fight with my hands, you know, it, the bumps and the bruises from being able to be able to fight through this whole industry full of, you know, liars and connivers and, you know, people are looking to take whatever they can get from you and then People are saying they know you got good product, but they're saying it's not because it don't seem to be beneficial to them. You know, mm -hmm. that type of stuff we put up with, it, it wears and tears on you after a while. Mm -hmm. You released an album on MCA back in 1989, and I know that was that period. Mm -hmm. I lived in Los Angeles at the time. That MCA was like still being called the music cemetery of America because they had an inability to break new acts. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that your record sort of waned you know while while you were there 
first of all, the only reason they put it out is that they did Eric a favor. Mm -hmm. You know, he was one of their biggest artists. You know what I mean? He come from his label, the, I think it was Island or one of those labels they mm -hmm. come from. And they did him a favor, you know what I mean? And I knew that going in the door. And my concept is when I sit down at the table with the slave master, I know that they will never make me as important as they are. And I knew that the album would, would have been a good album, but they didn't take me serious. When I walked through the door, they didn't take me serious. Mm -hmm. They didn't look at me as being a star. They didn't want to take me and nurture me as an artist. Mm -hmm. You know, they just saw me as somebody that Eric wanted to do a project with. Let's hope it happens. I don't look at it as a bad experience. I more or less look at it as an ex as as a lesson learned. Mm -hmm. You know, and I took it as that. And it, and I'm grateful for it. You know, what I mean, I mean, these jobs come and go. I said it on Industry Shakedown. You know, these jobs come and go, yo. You know, they come and go. One day you got a job, next minute you don't. Mm -hmm. You know, but if you stand up for yourself, the one thing that you will always remember is, you know, like the only subject that the king recognizes is the one that don't bow down. No matter what they do to you, he will always never know that he'll never get the glory of saying that you submitted.